Before we begin, we would like to bring up to the microphone David's sister Tanya, who would like to speak. To you. Um, I want to thank all of you for coming tonight. I know some of you have come from quite a distance, and we really appreciate you being here. And I also want to give a big uh, thank you to Fred Taylor and Anne Marie Blythe of Scholars, and for the and the double journey. For their generosity in allowing us to have this memorial here tonight. David and Fred go way back, and he's played here a number of times, so it's very fitting that we are here tonight. And um, join me in wishing Anne Marie a happy birthday and thank her for giving up her own celebration to be here with us today. Most of you knew David is an incredibly talented, multifaceted musician. And when I was younger, if I wasn't aware of his talent, um, I quickly got the message. Because every music class, every junior high school band and orchestra I joined, the inevitable question was asked, are you David Maxwell's sister? The delight and expectation in their voice uh, quickly uh, told me that David had made his mark talent-wise and that I was about to disappoint them. <laughs> Probably you don't know that in those days, David was a frequent uh, visitor at Jack's Joke Shop in downtown Boston, or some of you might remember. And uh, one of his favorite purchases were the fake shrunken heads, which he used to like to hang in my closet as well as my sister's to try and fight us. He was my fearless leader in playing practical jokes on the rest of the family. We never got tired of switching the sugar and salt on April Fool's Day. And one of our favorites was turning on the tape recorder surreptitiously to try to catch somebody saying something embarrassing. He was my older brother, my confidant, and my uh, co-conspirator. We used to pass notes under our bedroom doors early in the morning, planning our next moves. Uh, <clears throat> we honored the age-old code of nobody tells on nobody. He took me to the jazz workshop when I was a uh, teenager and loaned me uh, money when I was in college. He introduced me to the music of Muddy Waters and John Lee Hooker and later introduced me to them in person. For years, my New Year's Eve party was wherever David was playing. And for over 20 years, we had a weekly canasta game at our house. Um, that um, he always came to, and in fact, when his gigs interfered with that, we gave him a really hard time with that. He has always been a part of my life, and um, it's, I can't imagine or adjust um, to a world without it. And his passing has left um, a huge hole in my heart. I mean, I know that his musical legacy will live on in his videos and uh, recordings, but to me, he's always going to be my older brother and uh, partner in crime. I know his death came as a shock uh, to many of you, and I know many of you would have liked, would have been eager and willing to help, and would have liked the chance to say goodbye. But it was David's choice to stay very private about his illness, and we honor that, um, despite how difficult it was to do so. Before I turn this back over to Bob, I just want to uh, say a few words about the Pine Top Perkins Foundation. Pine Top began playing blues around 1927 and played with Muddy Waters for uh, 12 years. He and David had a very close uh, friendship. The foundation uh, provides encouragement and support for young people at the beginning of their career, and donations go for the, uh, towards the master class workshops, which are held every summer in uh, Clarksdale, Mississippi. David is taught there, and this summer, uh, one full and two partial scholarships were awarded in his name. So we certainly, um, uh, there are brochures and information about it on the table in the outer room. If uh, we encourage you to consider donating to this, um, to this organization in David's name, and I can't think of a better way to honor him. So now I'm going to give it back to Bob. Um, Bob has known David uh, since the beginning of his career. He uh, had they played and recorded together many, many times. Um, he's coordinated the musicians you're going to hear from tonight. And we want to give him a huge thank you, as well as all the other musicians you're going to be here tonight, for donating their time to honor David's memory. Um, everyone you, you're going to hear has played and toured with David many, many times, and we couldn't have done it without them. So thank you guys.
I've got to say, this is the strangest part of a memorial that I ever heard of, is that David, realizing that his time wasn't long, actually planned this evening for us. No piano players. David's the only piano player. His hat is right there. If, if, if that hat moves a lot, just, just ignore it, okay? But David did have, ask for some very specific people to play. And as the basics, he asked for three bands that would be with bass, drums, and guitar, and then we would add some more on. So, I'm going to start out, but we are going to bring up right away a magnificent musician and very close friend of David Maxwell, who is one of the deepest bluesmen I've ever heard. He plays piano, but not tonight, <laughs> and guitar and harmonica, and every note he plays is some of the deepest blues I ever heard. Please welcome up to the bandstand from New York City, Mr. Paul Osher. Yeah. And on the drums from right here in Massachusetts, Mr. Mike Avery. David and Mike and I were the Boys, Snake Johnson band together in about 1971. And you want the bottom, we got him on the bass from New York City, Mr. Johnny Ace. shows together uh, in Ottawa, Canada, and then he was in the Blues and Hell Festival in Norway. And uh, Leon Russell was also on the show, and David was playing the piano in the uh, in a hotel lobby, and uh, Leon Russell was just sitting there mesmerized for an hour. Leon didn't want to talk to nobody, but he watched David Maxwell. Maxwell was one of the greatest musicians I know. And I, uh, you know, when I got the Muddy Waters band, I shared the basin with all the span. And uh, Span had a great respect for Maxwell. And they were just like this, you know. And I was in Muddy's band when Pine Taps came in, and then David hung out with Pine. And uh, he's really been, I had to get here for this, you know. So I actually, I made, I made a tour so I could be here. I'd be playing the Johnny D's on Friday, but I set up a whole tour so I wouldn't miss this, you know? So, uh, we got Bob, he's part of the club, Money Waters Club. You know? And we got Jerry Porter in the house. And, uh, you know, Johnny Ace I know for years in uh, Brooklyn. Well, we're going to try to lay down some of this stuff to you.
blue. 